Hello, this is Meme Analysis, and today I'm going to be continuing the Creepypasta series. We're going to be looking into Slenderman, one of the most notorious of the Creepypastas. And I think that I have a convincing case on his history, his nature, and the kinds of effect that he has on people. So, stay tuned. Who is Slenderman? Slenderman is a creepypasta character created by Victor Serge, who takes his name from Victor Sage, the question. Now, Slenderman originated on a message board. It was a competition to edit creepy photos, and ultimately, his was deemed by the internet to be the most viable, the most frightening, the most iconic horror character I think the internet has produced yet. His visual influences came from The Question, The Tall Man from Phantasm, from The Mothman, and I think most clearly from 4chan's Anonymous, The Green Man, Anon. I've talked about his type in another video, and I will continue to elucidate on the meaning of that type later on. But also thematically, the influences were from William S. Burroughs and from H.P. Lovecraft. So while those make up the true history, visual and meaning, uh, it's also important to see, you know, who is he in the context of the internet. While he became a very frightening character, uh, he was also taken in by the creepypasta community as a very sexualized figure. Uh, very sexualized by Tumblr, the Tumblr community uh, of creepypasta. In fact, my, my girlfriend, uh, back when she was young, drew a picture of him and people commented about him being attractive, which she thought was very funny. Um, so I think that is very important. The fact that this otherwise very bizarre and frightening character is a sexual icon to the horror community. I think it's very important, and we'll get into that later. What is Slenderman? We've all heard the story before about the young child who went off into the woods and got lost, and they were found by something in the woods, indescribable, frightening, and they were never seen again. They were killed or spirited away into some strange land. They had broken some unnamed law. Some arcane edict had been violated, and so their life was changed forever. This is the situation that follows Slenderman. This is the situation that I think is deeply metaphorical for the internet. The child who gets lost in the woods is the one who has first explored the internet. They go into it, and at some point they break some law. They find something they've said that was wrong, or some opinion that they'd held that was wrong, and so they're punished gravely for it by that great faceless anonymous mass. I think that's a very important element of Slenderman and of Anon. Um, if you, you might recall, we are many, you know, they say, we are legion. That is meant literally, in the Deleuzian sense. Anon is a multiplicity, rhizomatic. And Slenderman, while he remains singular, his body is morphing, expanding, growing at all times, especially when attention is paid to it. Just like 4chan, just like any rambunctious and edgy group of people who use the internet, when attention is given to it, they gain a great deal of power. Their influence expands and continues to expand so long as the attention is given. This is truly why Slenderman is Anon. But even more so, who is Anon? That 
faceless green man is very clearly the green man of the pagans. And even more so, who is that green man of the pagans? None other than Pan. The story that I told about the child who goes into the woods, who is that monster? It is Pan. It is always Pan. Those screeches from nowhere, horrible shrieks and screams, strange music, horrible smells and sickness that accompanies a glance in the wrong direction. Those are the characteristics of that great god Pan, who Lovecraft's influence Arthur Machen had written about. It becomes very clear how similar their nature is. In the great god Pan, a child is driven insane after he'd met Pan, and even seeing a likeness of a satyr drives him into hysterical fits. I think we get this idea that Pan affects children horribly, stealing and killing them, and the ones that do escape, they are driven mad by it. This is shared by Slenderman. So, in short, the archetypal Pan, who lives on in his chaos causing, in 4chan's Anon, also influences Slenderman, because it is Tumblr and the rest of the internet's way of deciphering the green man. While it might be difficult to say, oh, this, you know, this neckbeard is causing chaos and spreading information that's false and causing harm and so on, it's much easier to create an embodiment of that rhizomatic legionary anonymous. He is their icon. Slenderman's rhizomatic nature is made even more apparent by his ability to teleport, which is to say that if we assume that time is essentially non-linear, or at least that rhizomatic manipulation of time-space is possible, it's very clear an individual or a multiplicity as capable of, uh, of chaos and efficiency would in fact rhizomatically alter their position in time and space. And that seems to be kind of one of the points about the Slenderman myth, is that he's eternal. That he's been there since the old days and that he's capable of appearing anywhere there are people that believe in him. Every child that goes into the woods could see him if they'd read about it. And so every time they take a glance, just at something that moved, it could be him. It becomes him. He becomes real. He's given reality by the belief, by the fear. And so his location is constantly changing. The location, you know, the presence of Slenderman, I think, is what inspires continuous belief in him, even after the knowledge that he is a fiction. He is a, a modern monster. The Greeks experience goats and men all the time. So a goat man was nothing particularly strange to them. I mean, it was monstrous, but it was expected. We knew that Pan was in the woods. It's the same way with faceless, anonymous men who are constantly upholding arcane, bizarre laws. The internet inspires this fear in children. So Slenderman is a great figurehead for it. Where is Slenderman? As I talked about before, Slenderman is rhizomatic in his ability to appear in many places. He is also extensively hyperstitional, perhaps more than any other internet entity at this point, in that he has been able to push many young girls into murder, into suicide, into arson. It sounds crazy, but we can point at many news stories in which the girls uh, had an interest in summoning him or, you know, pleasing this deity, pleasing this chaotic woodsman. It's very reminiscent. I've said the story before, but if you have an interest in Slenderman, I really highly suggest reading it. The Great God Pan by Arthur Machen. It follows that young girls 
uh, tended to be attracted to him, and they would help do his evil bidding. Uh, the child that went mad was a boy, and she grows up to be very beautiful and continues doing this evil. Changelings happen. A child that gets spirited away comes back, but without a soul. They come back uh, inhabited by a fairy, by an alien now. So, in some ways, that initial childhood influence from the woods, from the darkness, it sticks with them forever. This is true of Slenderman's influence, true of the Internet's influence. The child that is fostered in the spirit world will grow into a bizarre changeling. I think that is the important element that Slenderman is here, is real, and causes people to do things. This is the perfect example of fiction that becomes reality. Fiction becomes real because of belief. It is simplistic magic. If you can convince people to believe in something, you can convince them to act upon that belief. That is the true power of the archetypal Pan, the archetypal Slenderman. It's similar to Momo, this horrible beast, a maternal beast, that after the children have been raised by the internet, allowed to browse the internet free from any, you know, any watchful eye, and what happens? They either kill themselves or begin to become very harmful and despise their parents and fear their parents. They have, in a sense, become changelings. Momo has become their true mother. The story that I compare it to is the little red hen. Parents wonder why it is that their children become distant after the child spent all this time on the internet. The internet has become the true mother. They're reaping what they were sowing. And really, ultimately, when it comes down to it, the Slender Man is fiction. We can trace his roots very obviously. We can see every story ever written about him. And yet, people still believe. He is still believed in. There are still sightings, murders, and so on. And how is this possible? It is possible through synchronistic hyperstition. The unconscious, which fully has taken in and adopted this internet image, this meme, as a vessel for an archetype. Of course it will produce real effects. We cannot imagine archetypes as merely personal. I find that to be one of the greatest mistakes Jungians make. They assume archetypes are personal, whether they're here to help or here to harm us. The truth is that they are impersonal and collective. They affect people in mass. People comment sometimes, oh, why do you bother with analyzing memes? What, you know, what does it matter? I always say, memes matter. And it is because memes have a profound effect and are capable of affecting the real physical world, and they do so regularly. We are going to be living in a world gravely affected by memes by image viruses, word viruses, images and sounds that alter our life. And perhaps it is easier to remain in the dark, to not understand the mechanisms that are occurring around us, the great psychological shifts that are occurring. But I think it is extremely important and necessary to understand memes, to see how they affect us how they affect our children, and how will they affect politics, how will they affect religion, how will they affect all of life in the future. Communication is changing. Our minds are changing. And hopefully I will give us, all of us, a way to look into this change. So I hope that you can feel it with me, and remember that memes matter.